Hello YouTubers and animators. I am Cyborg Ty, and this is my first of such videos in which I will share movie production overviews and highlights. This will include a high level view of things that I experienced and learned during the creation of my animated movies. This is not a tutorial, but if you express interest in specific details, I may follow this video with relevant tutorial videos. The production highlights will include things like my inspirations, set design, layouts, models, characters, animation tools used, and rendering. This video is focused on the channel announcement video that I released over a week ago. Future production highlight videos will be posted on Mondays. In a quick examination of my channel, you'll learn that before this year, before 2019, I posted around 25 videos and they were a combination of live action movies and obviously animations. Unfortunately, the most I was able to post in a year was like three or four, I think was the most. And that's because I had a career that kept me quite busy at times. There were years that I traveled a lot. In fact, uh, over 30 weeks out of the year, I may have had to be someplace other than home. And uh, that was domestic as well as international travel. And the nature of certain roles required long hours, even when you were at home. But anyway, I decided to retire from the corporate world. So now I have more time for the hobby that I enjoy. So in 2019, I'm committed to posting weekly, and so far I'm doing well because I've posted during each of the last three weeks. When it came to the set design and layout, I decided to go with something that was inspired by a Maya fundamentals course I went through a few years back to acquaint myself with Maya. Anyway, it's a simple set with a stage, and it includes all the things that an announcer or a comedian would need. So you see the stool, the, the mic stand with the mic and, and the obvious things. And each week I'm actually working on multiple projects. I have a bigger, longer movie and then a, a simpler one. And so this was the one that was a simpler one. And so I wanted to make sure I, I could easily animate it and produce it and render it and everything uh, within the, the week. With this one, uh, it was also experimenting with renderers. Within Maya, you have several options, right? So for me, I've got the, the Maya built-in renderer, there's the Arnold, there's the hardware renderer. I could also have used Octane, but I wanted to really get a sense of what I could produce with the hardware renderer, and especially since it renders so quickly, but I'll come back to that later on. So that was the other reason why I wanted to keep this particular project simple so I can get everything I needed to show done within the one week. So I decided also to keep the character simple, make it a ball. But again, being the type of person who always challenges himself, I decided, okay, let me look at a different method of actually animating the face of the ball. And so I've used something with this that I didn't use before. I'll talk about that later in this video. Here you see a view in Maya where I'm including the outliner. And you can see it's a simple set, one light, and then all the, the objects really were comprised of simple primitives plane, spheres, cylinders, etc. you know, formed to create the objects. So very simple. You'll see there's also an, a locator that I used for the stage control, and that made it easy for me to just click that and then I'd have access to the attributes in the attribute editor in channel box, which were tied to set driven keys so I can actually open the door, close and open the curtains, you know, control those as I'd like. On the ball, I used the squash as well as the bend modifiers and used a curve where I set up uh, using set driven keys some attributes. And these attributes allow me easy access to controlling the squash and the bending of the, the object, in this case, the, the character. To animate the character's face, uh, I, I used different methods in the past to animate 2D character faces. In fact, if you look at my most recent Lego movies that I posted, you'll see that uh, I actually used a method in Lightwave, which was a combination of a flat animated face and brought that into layout and then uh, used this, dedicated a camera to it and then used the ray trace node there to project that animated face 
as a texture onto one of the Lego characters' faces. And so I, I really like the way that turned out. But anyway, in my I didn't don't believe there's a way to do it like that. Plus, uh, again, I wanted to do this really using something that I knew I could uh, put together in one week and get done. So I decided to use Adobe Character Animator which allowed me to use a camera and also my recorded voice to come up with a decent lip sync to whatever dialogue I provided. I took the best I had from a couple of recordings there, a couple of takes, and still ended up having to do some you know, minor tweaks to the visums, but the results I think came out pretty good. For secondary animation motions, I decided to use something that would allow the ball to move in sync as though it were resonating or you know, vibrating as a result of the audio that was being, being produced from it, or from within it, if you will. So I decided to use the actual audio to move the, the ball, right, to animate the ball. And it turns out Maya does have a plugin that I discovered called Audio Wave, which I use to produce that. If you don't see this tool in your Maya interface, it's probably because you don't have the bonus tools installed. But if it is installed under Create, you'll see the Audio Wave node. And that node can be used to affect any attribute. Of With my ball character, I had a choice of having the audio wave node affect the squash, the bend, or the Y scale. And as I was looking at the effect from different camera angles, it appeared the uh, scaling on the Y axis gave me the results that I was looking for. So that's, that's what I went with in the final version. One last thing I'll say about the animation tools used, I'd be remiss if I don't mention that I used the soft body dynamics on the curtains and uh, so it's pretty easy to use but also fun to work with. When it came to rendering I decided to use the renderer that gave me the look that I wanted in the shortest amount of time and that ended up being the hardware renderer, Maya's hardware renderer. That's the one that's used with the viewport 2.0 that they have and by default, the lighting model does not support reflections. So what I ended up doing was you know, running through, creating an initial beauty pass sequence, using that also in the reflection channels of both the floor, and I know also the various different reflective items like the base of the microphone stand you can see in the image here. I also rendered out a luminous pass, which I used as a depth pass. So anyway, I spent time working with this renderer to get the look that I wanted. So that's all for this episode. If you like the content, click like. And if you're not already a subscriber, subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified when I upload. Thanks for watching.